On this video, we're going to talk about determining similarity index for the range judging contest in Nebraska. For this part of the event, what you're going to have is you're going to have the guide for determining similarity index, like you see here. You'll need the one that is for the current MLRA that you are in. So, for example, right now I'm in the Sand Hills, that's MLRA 66. So, I'm going to use that sheet. You'll also need the worksheet for determining similarity index. Here it is. All right. So when you're all done, you're going to be filling out this part of the card. You're going to have your ecological site name and the similarity index number over here. There's several steps to this. The key is we want to follow the steps one by one. We'll go through the steps and then we'll look at a, an example site and fill out the card. The first step in determining the similarity index is to determine the ecological site. You're going to follow your steps for doing that by looking at the soil, looking at the slope, looking at the distance to water, and all the other uh, site characteristics. So for this example, let's say we have a sandy site. All right, so you'll have followed all the characteristics of the sandy site, determine that's what it was. We're going to mark that down. So we're going to use this column here that says Sandy in it. The next part of determining similarity index is we're going to fill out this worksheet. So in this worksheet, we want to list the plants that are present, but we're not just going to list each plant necessarily. We're going to list the individual species if it's on this guide. So if it's big blue stem, you'll write it down. Indian grass will write it down. Anything that's on the guide will write down individually as a species. Then we're also going to group certain plants. So for example, native perennial forbs, very common group. So native perennial forbs, all of the native perennial forbs will be listed on the sheet just together. When I do it, I just write native perennial forbs and they'll count as one group. Also, we will list plants like uh, shrubs as one big group, so all the shrubs together. Any sedges will group all together. Then if there's other grasses that are in the site but are not on this sheet, they're going to go under this native other perennial native grasses and count there. And you'll note sometimes there are little asterisks in here or maybe a plant might be at a site but it doesn't have a number in that column. So if you found buffalo grass in the sandy site, you're going to scroll to the bottom and see what the instructions say. So with the ones that have the asterisk, it says they are 1 to 2 percent of the community in this reference plant community. So we're going to include those with these plants that we include with the other perennial native grasses, but no more than 2 percent. And then the perennial native grasses above here, so the ones that don't have a number, you can list the, them under the other native perennial grasses as well as those that aren't on the list. So we'll, we'll do that when we see those. You have to pay close attention to the sheet and make sure you're following the guide exactly. All right, so what the guide is going to give us is the maximum percentage of that plant by the weight of the plant of the current year's growth that would we expect to find in that community under its best potential, right? So this is the maximum allowed when we determine their, their uh, similarity index. And we'll explain that as we fill out the sheet. So we're gonna list those plants down here and the individual groups. So maybe we have a little blue stem, maybe we have native perennial forbs all listed together then, native shrubs all listed together, and then I like to list things like annuals and biennials together since they're not on the sheet and they're not perennial grasses. So they will be listed together because uh, they can be one big group that way. All right. We're going to estimate once we're done with listing the plants, the percentage of each species or group in the total. And we're going to figure that we're going to estimate their percentage by weight and it's by dry weight of the current year's growth. And that's probably the most difficult part. But we're gonna, I, I think it's best usually to look at the site and figure out what one has the highest percentage 
the larger plants where there's more of them and then work my way down to the smaller plants and the groups that have fewer plants in them. Then we will take the number from the chart, the percentage allowed, and we're going to we're going to enter on this column here. So that's the number from this chart here. And then the final step is to list the percentage that's applied, and that is simply the lower of the two numbers in the previous two columns. Once we have that done, we'll be able to total up our percentage applied in the last column, and that'll be our answer. So let's look at a site real quick. Okay, so when we go to the range sites, it'll be a fairly large site, maybe 30 feet by 30 feet or so when we're doing the similarity index. I have a smaller site here alongside the building here that has a, quite a variety of plants in it. And you're gonna to wanna to work your way all the way around the site, make a list of the plants that are there, look down inside, see how many smaller plants there are. Try to make sure you catch all those plants and figure out which ones are gonna weigh the most, most so you have this year's growth. So on this site, as I look at it, I have several different native perennial grasses that I would list. You have little blue stem. There's some side oats grama in here. There's switchgrass, blue grama, Scribner rosette grass. Those are most of our native perennial grasses I could find. Then we have some others like the native perennial forbs, the verbenas, and the western ragweed are in here. Uh, there's some common yarrow I found. Uh, we also so we also have some annuals, and those are mostly the horseweed, and there's a little bit of woolly plantain and some other native uh, annuals in there. Uh, we also found some sedges down below, so there are some sedges in here, and then there was some introduced plants, and those I grouped together also. Uh, there was some red clover and some Kentucky bluegrass or which are introduced plants in this site. We're going to want to lump the introduced together also because they're not on the sheet and they're going to be their own grouping. So there's your your uh, introduced plants there. By percentage weights, um, I figured that the little blue stem in this site was the most. It's almost a third of the site. There's quite a bit of it. 30% is what I estimated. The native perennial forbs as a group, so all of them together at 20%, and then the annuals at 15. So those are my three biggest groups. Uh, I come down in Kentucky bluegrass and the, and the clover, the introduced plants in there, I figured at 10. The Scribner rosette grass at 5%, the blue grama at 5%, the switchgrass at 5%, the side oats at 5% and then the sedges at 5%. So I made sure that added up to 100% of plants that are in the site. Now let's take and move those over to our to our worksheet for determining the range the range similarity index. Let's put all of those plants then and their percentages on our worksheet for determining similarity index. When we we're in this on the site we were able to see little blue stem and it was at 30%. That's the percent of each present of each species present or in the total forage yield. And then we look on our guide and for little blue stem under sandy, we can follow along and it says 25 is allowed. So that's what's going to go here is the 25. <clears throat> then the, the last column is the lower of the two numbers. That's what's applied. You can only apply the smaller of the two numbers. Then we had native perennial forbs was our next largest. That was 20%. From our guide, it's 10 is what's allowed. So 10 is applied. Then we had the annuals. The annuals 
was 15%, but they don't show up on the guide anywhere, and they're not an other perennial grass, so they're going to get zero. Zero is what is allowed for the annuals, and so zero is applied. The introduced plants were next. I had those at 10%. Introduced is going to be along the same line. There's no introduced plants on our guide. We don't count those in the reference community. So therefore, zero is what is allowed and zero is applied. The same would be true for, the, for any biennial plants you might have in your site also. Then we had a whole group of plants that we just counted at 5% each. Side oats. Grama was one. On the chart above, Cytos Grama counted five. We had switchgrass at 5%. Then there was 20% allowed, but we only have five, so we count five. The next plant was blue grama. It was present at 5%, and on the guide above, it shows that 10% is allowed, but then we can only count the 5% that was there. Next, I had Scribner rosette grass. At 5%, and in the sandy, 5% was allowed, so I can count all of it. And finally, I had sedges. And on the guide, it shows sedges here as sedge family other. And this is the column for Sandy. So on this one, it's 10%. 5% was present. 10% allowed. We'll count 5%. <clears throat> when I total those all up, you can tell them at the bottom or wherever you want. You only total this last column. And that's the percent applied to the similarity index. When I add that up, I end up with 60%. That's the number that I'm going to enter on my card here. So I have the Sandy here where it says ecological site name. Then I just enter a single number here. I'm going to write 60. From the official answer, I can get 70%. So if the official answer was 60, I could write any number between 50 and 70. When we look at this, we didn't have any shrubs this time. If we'd had shrubs, we'd have counted them here. So we'd have counted all shrubs together as one group, just like we did the native perennial forbs. And then we didn't have any that had the asterisk in it. If, if in this case, maybe... There's no asterisks in this, but if we'd had some Canada wild rye, if it had an asterisk here, we'd read below and it would have shown that you can only count 2% of it and you include it with other perennial native grasses. So perhaps there were uh, some green needle grass. It has nothing in the blank, but you count it as part of the other perennial native grasses. That's... That's all the steps for the determining the similarity index. This card won't be scored here, but you'll, you'll fill it out on the official contest card here and turn that in. Good luck.